fill your cup first. Let's talk about relationships a little bit, alright? When you're younger, when you're in your teenage years, like I am, a lot of people our age, we have, we're all getting these new experiences, meeting these new people, developing different beliefs about the world, different beliefs in general, and every, everything's always changing. Everything's always new, everything's always different, some things stay the same. A lot of people get into relationships because they feel as though they aren't good enough. And they think that if I can find someone who makes me feel like I'm good enough, then I'll be good enough. And listen, I'm not going to say in certain scenarios that that doesn't work, that after being with somebody and you don't feel good enough, they can make you feel good enough. I think that's possible. But overall, if you don't fill your cup first, if you're not happy, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't have your head on straight, you're going to bring that to your relationship. Whether they're insecure too, or whether they're secure in themselves, it's probably not going to work. Now, I'm sure there's situations where if there's two insecure people and they come together, they can help each other, or it just ends in disaster and the insecurities just plague everything and then everything eventually ends. If you don't love yourself, if you don't love yourself, how are you going to love someone else? Now, you can give affection to someone else, you can care about somebody else, but you can't truly love them if you don't love yourself because if you don't have any love inside of you, how do you have love to give to somebody else? You can only express and only give what is inside. There's no love inside of you. What you're giving to the other person isn't exactly love. It's just affection, clinginess, sexual enjoyment, whatever it is. And there's... But there is... Now, I'm not going to say if you're a little bit insecure or you don't have your life in perfect order because I don't have my life in perfect order I'm not going to say don't get into a relationship but if you're you're down in the dumps and everything everything sucks you probably shouldn't get into a relationship because you're probably going to bring that there and if you're down in the dumps and you get with someone you get into a relationship with someone you're going to bring that there and ultimately it's you're going to learn things you're going to gain experience but it's probably going to end in a bad way because let's say they're a secure person and you're not you're bringing your insecurities there and those are going to drag the relationship down because you're going to express that consciously or unconsciously to them and they're they might either they might want to help you and they might help you or it's kind of or it'll kind of be a turn off for them you know what i mean now I mean, in my personal experience, I think every single girl that I've dated has shown me and expressed to me verbally or non-verbally that they're at least a little bit insecure. And I, most of, I, like, I still have insecurities of, cer of certain things. And everyone has insecurities. Some people have more than others. Some people only have one, a little bit. But everyone has something. So when you get into a relationship, you, you can help each other. If you both have a, small insecurities, you guys can definitely help yourselves and help each other work through them. Now, whether the, end, the relationship ends or it doesn't, you're going to learn something. And if it does end, then you learn something. And the most that's the most important thing is learning something when you're in a relationship. If you're in a relationship where it's just stagnant and you're not learning anything about each other and you're not learning anything about yourself and advancing your life, then what's the point? And a lot of people nowadays, especially my age, only have relationships with e each other for sexual pleasure, essentially. And, you know, that can be enjoyable for someone for a certain amount of time, but it probably gets to a point, I know it did for me, it gets to a point where you think to yourself, what is the point of this? Am I really gaining anything? And you can... 
analyze yourself and maybe you're doing something wrong or analyze your partner and maybe they're doing something wrong and figure it out together and sometimes you're with somebody and you don't realize it until later that they're not the right person for you that happens that happened to me but the most important thing is essentially everyone says it it's communication but like nobody knows how important it is because if you don't communicate about everything about how you're feeling about what you believe what you think about a certain situation if you're not being your authentic self then you're not going to be able to work through it and things aren't going to end well and there's a lot of things nowadays where in like the unlike with like certain youtube channels and just people talking in general about you know there's always a stigma with men not being able to show their emotions and um i mean I, i've suffered that suffered from that a lot not feeling like i can open up and stuff like that but in a relationship where you're getting to know each other and trying to become better people in general and build a better life for yourself the most important thing is to express what you feel if you feel like shit if you feel like I, I f i'm trying to think if i've ever cried in front of somebody i really cared about yeah i have i think there's at first at first when i before I really had much experience with anyone. I thought there was something wrong with that. I thought as a man, you're not supposed to cry. You're not supposed to show emotion. So in my first relationship, I didn't. I opened up to her like once within like the first two weeks of the relationship, just telling her a little bit about my past and stuff. But after that, I was like, you know what? I have to maintain this persona, this mask of I'm a masculine man and I don't have to show emotions. But if I, But I did feel emotions. And I did feel shitty sometimes. But I didn't feel like expressing those to her was a masculine aspect so I kept it inside of me and then the relationship eventually ended it wasn't exactly because of that but I remember being in the relationship and eating myself up in my head because fe just feeling like I can't communicate is I mean it's a horrible thing because you opening up to someone really gives them an opportunity to either help you or just listen to you and having someone to listen to you even if it's not something you need help with is it's cool sometimes and it's important if you're in a relationship to be able to be able to feel comfortable enough to open up to that person and express those emotions and express those beliefs and not be judged for it now they can have different beliefs you guys can argue about things you guys can disagree that's fine but ultimately when you're talking and you're communicating how you feel there shouldn't there shouldn't be any screaming there shouldn't be any anything like that okay yeah i, I hear a lot of people nowadays and like I, I i mean i flat out call them toxic relationships partner screaming at you, partner needs to have sex with you at a certain time, if you don't, you're a bad person, shit like that, and it's just, it's sad that people feel the need that they have to do that to someone else and control somebody else, and it's also even worse that I have seen a lot of people be on the negative side of that, they have a controlling partner, and they decide to stay with them. Now I know the decision isn't always exactly conscious because it kind of, I've done a little bit of research on it, psychologically it kind of becomes like an addiction and it's, that person is familiar to you. And they can also kind of brainwash, the, the controlling partner can also, you know, brainwash you and get you to believe certain things like, oh, if you're not with me, you'll never be anything, blah, 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 blah. And if the partner who's on the negative side of it believes that, then I mean they're gonna stay with them because they're essentially feeling safe in the sense that their presence is familiar and they'll always be there for them not in a good way though and you know going back a little a little bit to filling your cup first when you fill your cup first and you have something to give when you have love to give the experience is so much better And well, 
going back again a little bit, I remember a time where I, I w was dating someone and she was insecure a little bit about certain things and I was insecure about certain things and I didn't really have a good mindset at the time. I was going through a lot of stuff and she was there to help me and she did but it eventually ended and there was only when I look back at it there was only so much she could do she can say as much as she wants she can try to help me as much as she want she wants but if I don't change my beliefs if I don't change the way I talk if I don't change the way I'm doing certain things in my life there's only so much she can do before it gets to a point where it's like okay if you're not gonna change if you're not gonna be who you said you were then what's the point of staying around and that made sense so I mean again going back being authentic being who you are and being who you say you are it's the most important thing because you can miss out on a really great person because of some mistakes you've made and there's forgiveness that there's there's forgiveness there's some people that forgive and there's some people that don't but the most important thing is communication and communicating as much as you can on things that you disagree on things that you want to work through because if you put things off and someone says that they forgive the other person but they don't really then it's going to linger in their mind and then whether it's a week down the line or a month down the line or a year down the line or five years down the line that's going to still linger with them and then eventually they're probably going to end things and then if it was lingering in their mind the whole time and they didn't, and they didn't or you didn't communicate that and it was five years time you guys just wasted five fucking years you could have met someone else you could have started something else you could have done something else with your life now I'm sure in that five years you've had experience and gained a lot of knowledge but still it's some wasted time so and then with friends too I mean there's a lot of people I know that don't have that great friends and they're always there for their friends but their friends aren't there for them but they're still like, oh, I'm a nice person and I still want to help them, so blah, 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 I'm going to keep helping them, blah, blah, blah. And what I say, this is what I believe. Be a nice person. That being you. Help your friends out. But if it gets to a point where you're helping your friends out for everything, you're always there for them, and they're never there for you, what is the point of spending the time that you do trying to help them? Now, I'm not saying give up on somebody who's down in the, in, in the dumps and needs your help. I'm not saying that. But people who are doing okay in life and they're not providing any value to your life, but you're, trying to, you're providing value for them, but they don't give you anything in return, you should probably cut that person off. Or people. Because sometimes it's multiple people in your life. Sometimes it's only one person. Sometimes it's everyone. I've, I've heard people... Who have cut off their cut off their entire friend group, cut off everyone because they weren't doing any good for them. And then, as a result, their life became better. And then they met other people that then inspired them to become a better person. They actually helped each other, and the friendship was mutual. It wasn't one sided. You have a one sided friendship. You have a one sided relationship. You probably shouldn't stay in it. Of course, there's different circumstances, there's different situations, but the broad take is don't stick around if they're not providing anything for you because it's I've seen from one of my friends personally it kind of drains her helping someone all the time helping multiple people all the time and they're not them not being there for her that's got to suck doing something doing multiple things for multiple people all the time always helping people out people out but never it never being returned Nobody ever asking you how you are. Nobody ever checking up on you. That's gotta suck. 
And I've also heard of people who have cut off certain family members. If, I, I know it's when you're younger, it's a little bit more difficult. But when you're a little bit older, I mean, it could even be your parents. It could even be, it could just be a cousin, could be a sibling, whatever. Some people, it gets to a point where, you know, they had an abusive parent or sibling or whatever. You're not obligated to still talk to them. If they have done only negative things in your life, if they only do negative things in your life, oh, but, but he's my brother. If your brother's the shittiest person you've ever met, and, you have, and you're out in your own world, you don't have to talk to them anymore. Now, I know that sounds like shit. And from my, I know my family, my parents, my brother, I never do that to them because they've always done good for me. But for certain people, I know that when I listen, I'm like, if I had a parent like that, if I had a brother like that, when I'm out, I'd never talk to them again. Because there's certain people, if they're negative people, they're negative people. Whether it's a family member, a relationship, friends, no matter what their status is in your life, if they're completely negative people and not helping you at all and only draining you, no matter who they are, there's no point in keeping them around. Because that's only going to bring you down. You could be on your shit. You could be on your grind. You could be doing so well. and then they'll, But then every single day when you talk to that person, when you talk to those people, they'll judge you. And they'll say that negative thing. And they'll say you can't make it. And eventually that weighs down on you. And it's just not, it's not good to have that type of negativity in your life. You need people that... Now, not everyone's going to be positive all the time. But you need people that are there for you people that are trying to instill some positivity in their own life and in yours and be there for you and you're there for them and the connection is genuine the connection isn't genuine if you're not genuine to them if they're not genuine to you and if you guys talk shit about each other behind your back there's no point of it going on when I hear about people and I've I I remember one day in high school it was my freshman year some I know it's, it was freshman year so the girl and the guy were still young but they were in a relationship and I didn't know the guy but I knew the girl and I remember the girl telling her friends, like, oh, he's so annoying, he's blah, 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 blah. And I guarantee she never said that to his face, but she's talking shit about him behind his back. And that's not a healthy relationship. When I've been in a relationship, I've never gone behind my partner's back and said, oh, yeah, she's such a shit person, blah, 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 this and that. Why would you, if what you're saying is true, why would you want to stay with them? If, you're, if you believe your partner's a shit person, if you're talking shit about them all the time, why are you still with them? What good does it do you? Nowadays, I mean, drama is the new fun for people. People love talking crap about each other. People get off on it. People don't like to talk about anything else aside from that. And when I meet people like that, I just stop talking to them. And I think you should too. Because people who... People who talk shit about when when someone's talking to sh talking shit about someone else to you, whether it's a friend, a relationship, blah blah blah, whatever, and it's all the time. And then when they see them, they're like they act all happy and all like normal. They're probably talking shit about you too behind your back, and you don't even know it. And maybe one day you'll find out, or maybe one day you well, you won't. But it's probably happening. And people who are have drama oriented lives. Just stay away from them. They're, they're going to bring drama to your life and to everyone else you know in the friend group or whatever. And that's just going to plague everything. And people are going to start unnecessary fights with each other. And people like that, people who are drama-oriented, are not secure in themselves. So you got to let them do their thing. Maybe one day they'll figure out that they're insecure that the drama-oriented life isn't the way to go. Or maybe they'll live that life. And that's 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 their destiny. That, that's their thing. And now you can always try to talk to people and be like, hey, I don't think you should be having this much drama in your life. I don't think you should be talking shit about this person. You know, occasionally, I mean, people can listen. You can try. But some people are so far gone, there's no point in even trying to argue with them. It's like it's like a religious person that's so set on certain beliefs that if you that, that they won't even listen. That something like someone who's so religious or someone who's so political about something that they won't even listen to you. They won't even open their ears and listen to you and listen to your beliefs. 
those people are so far gone, you don't gotta fuck with them. You, you don't gotta talk to them. You don't gotta try to change their mind. You just gotta let them be them. Alright, one day, maybe they'll gain more of an open mind, or maybe one day they won't. And you know what? Everyone's got their own beliefs on the world. Everyone believes what they want, and that's fine. So, kind of went all over the place in a few different directions, but, you know, fill your own cup before you get into a relationship. Make sure you don't get into a toxic relationship. If you're in a toxic relationship, get the fuck out of there. I know it might be difficult sometimes, but talk to somebody. Talk to a best friend you have. Talk to someone. Express your emotions to someone because they may... And they might be they might be able to help you. I'm not saying going to fucking therapy or anything, but talk to someone about an issue like that. And work to develop beliefs about the world and go out and have new experiences because, you know, I mean, we're young and it's good to get experience with different people and learn about different people and learn about yourself. It's good to go out and stuff. And it's also good to spend time alone and learn more about yourself um so essentially that's it i'll talk to you guys later in the next one peace